Hi. So, one of the things <clears throat> that happens to people like me with BPD, uh, if I connect with somebody, it gets weird. Uh, so, you know, that makes life difficult, to say the least. And by connect with somebody, I mean, like, to any degree whatsoever. Like, if I, if somebody cares about me, that's, that's kind of it. If somebody starts caring about me, I get scared. Because the people who care about me uh, do things, you know, uh, sometimes bad things, sometimes very bad things. I don't know how my teeth left. And not all of that was, um, you know, natural. Some of that was uh, violent. <laughs> we punched him in the face a lot. We kicked downstairs. My back has been in anguish causing me anguish for, I don't know, 31 years? I mean, imagine imagine 31 years of back pain. How would you feel? Right? I have a place to stay, as you can see. I have a new apartment. That's wonderful. It's better than the bridge. Bridge is windy. Bridge is very noisy and windy. This is like living in the country, you know. Actually, no, it's better than living in the country. Holy hell. In the country, guess what's happening? People are screaming and hitting each other. <laughs> Go figure. Why are people screaming and hitting each other in the country? Hmm. We don't talk about domestic violence ever. Because that would be airing our dirty laundry. Why would we do that? I mean, we might fix something if we talked about our problems. We wouldn't want to fix anything, would we? That would involve work. Oh my God, let's not do that. And you might be thinking, why is he smoking two cigarettes? Well, one of them's not a cigarette. Leave me alone. Better than what I should be doing to handle pain. High levels of opiates or something. Anything. And it's not just my back, by the way. Sometimes I tell people I'm in pain. And... I tell them, I just have to triage and tell them, like, you know, what hurts the most. Damn near 40. A lot of things hurt. And it's like everybody I talk to thinks that there's only one thing ever. It's not that they think that. It's just they say stupid shit out their mouth. Like... But I thought you had hernias. Yeah, I do. I do. I have hernias. I had a back problem. Two things. Oh my god. People can have two problems. Isn't that neat? Like, smart people say that. I thought, but I thought that this was bothering me. Yeah, both things are bothering me. Fucking piece of shit. How do you, like, you have two problems. Sometimes you have a headache and a stomachache. That's two things. Oh my god. Just people are just simple. Simple motherfuckers. And they can't understand anything but themselves. And it's annoying. I put up with it because I promised myself I wouldn't kill myself. And I think it was the wrong decision, personally. Oceanfront property. It's pretty nice. 
what I mean by that is I used to live somewhat near the coast. Not this coast, not this deep south bullshit, the uh, mid-Atlantic, Ocean City, Maryland. You know, I'd run to it and stay there. But I had to get away from stupid pieces of shit. Which, by the way, I'm referring to myself, I'm a stupid piece of shit, okay? And all of mankind is one, you know, one this together, one love, right? So you're a stupid piece of shit, too. Because you are me, and I am you. You stupid piece of shit. <sighs> the reason I'm in absolute anger doing that was because I didn't talk to somebody that was a problem. For me, not her. She's fine. She doesn't use social media. She'll never see this shit. Oh, and it's not her fault. I have personal responsibility for my, you know, I could have just left. And I tried, actually, <laughs> in the way that I do. It took me half an hour to, like, move all my things to different places and then new different places and then new different places to make sure that I had all my things. Let me go peer out. I'm hearing noises. Now a couple people know I'm living in here, so I'm gonna go. I mean, I don't have to. They don't give a shit. Uh, cops in this town know me, kind of. Like a lot of them do. You know, a lot of them see me and they're like, "Hey, there's a guy." And a lot of them just know that I'm somebody and don't know what. And some of them, I mean. When I've introduced myself to you like five times, and because you're a stupid piece of shit like me, very selfish, you don't remember me. You can only like, keep track of like a hundred people. I can keep track of way more, way more than you. And it's not because I'm smarter than you, it's because I'm, I'm in constant pain and constantly induce people to be violent against me. So, I track people so that I know how close they are to me, so that I know how much in danger I am of violence, because I'm a very good hypnotist. I hypnotize people into doing the things I want them to do. You have to be willing, you stupid piece of shit. You can't hypnotize somebody who doesn't want to be hypnotized. Read something and you'll know that. I could poke my eyes out and still walk around Rock City and know where I'm going. Like, literally, I could just <laughs> blind myself. And I can get by on what I hear. And what I feel. Beat. I 
do that sometimes. I walk around Rocket City with my eyes closed. Oh, by the way, Rocket City, for those of you who have never, who have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, Rocket City is Huntsville, Alabama. They call themselves Rocket City because they have nothing else to cleave to. And, uh, like, you know, a thousand people build rockets out of 220,000, however many people that we have now in Huntsville, Alabama. They're just, they're really proud of what other people do in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh my God, it's space, 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 fucking space. Most of you don't work in space, okay? So like, um, you know, get over yourselves. Oh, uh, this is the courtship people remember. Joel talking about what a piece of shit you are. Again, oneness of mankind. Joel's talking about how much of a piece of shit he is. And you, because you are me and I am you. I want you to understand that because you are a piece of shit. And I am a piece of shit. And we are the same person. That is not untrue. The noise I heard earlier, it was the flag. I'm at the Veterans Memorial. There was a ceremony, is a ceremony, I don't give a fuck. All I give a fuck about is I can hide somewhere right now. I was connected with a person, and that person looked me up online and knows who I am and got worried. When people worry, that's when shit goes wrong. It's nothing but tense exhaustion. When I say nothing but, I mean I wake up and I'm in pain. I'm exhausted. Fucking muscle cramps. My back is also not great because I slept under a bridge on concrete two nights in a row. That was tough. Uh, there are better places I could have slept in a dumpster. I just crashed to lay on a dumpster and my back would not hurt as much. And oh, by the you might be thinking right now, don't sleep in a dumpster. No, but it, my back would be better if I slept in a dumpster. Are you listening to me or are you not? You've tuned out by now, most of you. I know, because I have metrics. Welcome to the YouTube, guys. Oh no, shit just got real. There's a bunch of fun music videos and shit. Oh no, but now it's shit got real again. Oh no. Oh, shit gets real for you. Like, Stop doing what you're doing. Thought we were supposed to be honest. God, 
I even the, the girl. She it was a girl. Oh no. Right? Oh no indeed. It's always the fucking worst. That's and I don't mean women are the worst, I mean like it. I mean, like, if I connect with a girl because I'm heterosexual, uh, it's worse than if I connect with a guy um, because, I don't know, primal, probably primal instincts or whatever, like pair bonding instincts, like my, my instinct is to make, is to do whatever I can to get that person to fall in love with me. And it's like, it's freakish, man, how quickly I can get a girl, like, interested in me. Freakish. Especially when, like, things are bad. Meaning good. Meaning I'm extremely mindful and living in the present moment. Meaning the 2.5 seconds that you can perceive at any given time, read a book. Science. You you can't perceive the past or the future. You can't experience the past and the future. You guess at the future and you remember the past and you remember it wrong. Science. Read a book. That's in some of the lyrics of my Floyd of the Chartreuse Kitten songs. Every time you remember something, it changes. Big, I think it's the song. The bridge. I think it's where that line is. I can weep on command or 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 for a sketch. It's happened. I've done it many, many times. I've been a creative my entire life. We don't you know how some people are like, Oh, you have to be born an artist. I mean, yeah, kinda. You have to be tortured, you have to be broken, you have to give up. You have to want to give up to be an artist. And if you don't want to give up, stop doing art. You're doing shitty art. If you're not suicidal, don't do art. Unfortunately, more and more of you are, in fact, suicidal. That, again, is science and data. That's shitty. But... It's the nature of man. Okay. I'm going to flip this more attention and call to my new apartment. This, by the way, is not a panic attack. This is just a person who lives in the present moment 2.5 seconds, which is what panic is, kind of. Panic is being sharply focused in a survival state of mind, right? And so mindfulness is voluntary panic. Not in a sense, in reality. It's chilly in here. It's gotten chilly in Huntsville. It gets chilly for like a couple of months. Out of the year.
I could seal this up pretty good, probably. And there would be like literally no end. That'd be nice. Stay in here long enough, somebody's gonna want to check on me. And that won't be nice. I'll be scared. They'll have guns. They'll misunderstand something. I have to make sure they don't misunderstand, otherwise the consequences are dire. I'll try to explain that. Stupid pieces of shit like myself. Speak of stupid pieces of shit. Somebody I used to know when I was unraveling because my boss is not my current boss, but my old boss. He's a completely out of control idiot. Um, so the back pain is like, I can't fucking focus on it. Fucking thing. I can focus on being in the present moment so I don't kill myself, but I can't think of anything else. I can't. Because it means bad, because I connected with the girl, as I explained. She got worried. She started caring for me, which is appreciated. You know, I, like, I don't not appreciate her concern. I've met her before, and I met the reason I connected so hard with her all the times that I've met this particular woman. Um, there's a particular sound that I can't identify. I have to look, focus on Find it. Identify it. Clear it. Move on. But yeah, you know, this girl. Oh, I've met her. Who knows how many times at this point? Because this is a, this is Mayberry. Oh my God. Um. She's a high level operator. By then, I mean she's very focused. And per she perceives her environment very well. She's not so well that, like me, she can't not focus on shit. Like, she can block shit out. And God bless her for that. Keeps her from being like me. Nice thing about living in a porta potty is you do like if you wake up and have to go to the bathroom, you're there. It's, I mean, that's pretty fucking cool, actually. Like, don't feel weird and sorry. That's a nice perk. I don't think I'll actually be able to go to the bathroom without rituals because uh, the moment this girl started being concerned. My uh, body, like every muscle in my body, started to contract out of fear that she'll hit me. It's pretty stupid. I know. If it was rational, it wouldn't be mental illness now, would it? Very sharply cold breeze coming through. And like I said, I could fix that. I could fix that by sealing this thing up with like paper and tape. Easy. Be able to take it down, you wouldn't know I was here. So, the honest truth is, 
this girl, she's a good girl, you know, she's a good woman, she's a good person, a good human being, she's not a piece of shit like me and you. She is, she, we all are one person, you know, I'm sure she's a piece of shit, but she cares a lot about the people around her and she's able to keep boundaries and understand the difference between herself and the other person. That's the kind of person I need in my life. And so of course I would be, you know, like, of course I'm like, wow, now I'm focused on that girl. That's just, that is who I am. I am a survivor who like, purposely avoids connecting with people, which you know, that is cognitive dissonance. I'll say it again for those of you who are really, really slow. Cognitive dissonance. Google it. You have your computer on, you're watching YouTube. Cognitive dissonance is the source of most of your pain. Physical and otherwise. Mental. So the issue is such, I desperately need to connect with a human being, because if I don't connect with a human being, I will not make it very far. If I connect with a human being, my body turns against me, pushes my spine till the back issues that I developed as an eight-year-old uh, become unbearably painful. I start walking like a weirdo. Stretching my back with every step. And people are like, what? And then artists who care write songs that say things like, and if I shift a wing and let it hang a left, I'm just overcompensating for this pain in my chest. I feel like shitty for immersing so much in artists' lives that they have to write songs that like pertain to my issues. I'm not saying that Breakmaster Cylinder wrote that song for me, but I really uh, kind of inserted myself into BMC's life to such a degree that a few of the songs may accidentally have this, this dude's parts in it, you know? It's not the first time that's happened to Breakmaster. It's, you know, it's not you. It's uh, hypnotism. Shit. I broke my watch. Uh, how did I... What did... How? This was attached a second ago. <laughs> it is now not attached. Uh, fucking matter, nothing does. You know that, that's why you're suicidal. Uh, yeah, there it is. By it is, I mean, I heard the sound of the ring that was holding that chain to that watch. Like I said, if I poked my eyes out, I would still be able to see. Oh, when lighters get cold, they don't light well. Because the uh, liquid inside needs to be a gas to, for it to work. Trying to find the fucking tiny piece. There it is. Ooh, ooh. I heard it hit the laptop, but I didn't, I, I didn't hear it hit the plastic of the porta potty, which told me it's still on the laptop. Which means if I close the laptop, it's gonna scratch the glass. So I had to find it. Found it. We're gonna hold on to it so that we don't 
lose a thing. <laughs> Dude, shit, my, my shit was spread all over the place. All over the place. Like, all over it. I don't, I don't just mean in roommates' houses. I mean, like, all over us. You have no idea. It's been five years. This weird, fucking panicked dude wandering and losing shit. My shit is everywhere. And I remember every fucking thing that I have lost when I see it. I'm like, oh yeah, that was my shit. Oh yeah, that was my shit. I start doing it on purpose at this point. I start placing things in certain places. My shoes and socks are in a bush across from Richard's Lighting, which is a great store. Across the street, that's where my shoes are, in a bush. It's because I bought new shoes. So I had ruined those shoes walking in them. You have no idea how many pairs of shoes, holy shit, that I've gone through in the last five years. God help us. Because I left my uh, dignity and uh, both cars and the house and the apartment and both dogs and my two front teeth in the divorce. I think that's what I signed away when I signed those papers. I the, the dogs and the teeth weren't in the paper. That's just a metaphor. Yes. Yes. It's not a metaphor. I don't even I don't fucking care. Uh Chartreuse project at gmail.com. Send me money so I don't have to live in porta potties. Anything that goes above my very lean expenses, I will shower on homeless people. Get thousands of dollars of my paycheck that I fucking earned to homeless people directly. Oh no, what if they buy drugs? Dude, you're on so many drugs, shut the fuck up. Oh, what if the homeless person buys drugs? Well, yeah, uh, caffeine? Yeah, aspirin? Uh, yeah, guess what? Homeless people are in pain, like you, motherfucker. What if they buy drugs? Just let them buy drugs, you asshole. <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with you? It's usually people on drugs that say that, too. Uh, you're not fucking fooling anybody. I mean, anybody that listens to you knows your game. Don't try to fool people, you piece of shit. Oof. So, somebody that I know, Sherpanich, Sherp, Sherp, Sherpanich, I, uh, I assume that's how you would, uh, God, I am, I'm sitting in a stress position. So, there's a YouTube channel, awesome dude, filmmaker, has drones, won't talk to me, he does not know what to think about me, and I get it, dude, <laughs> like, believe me, I do, um, I, 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 I know, like, he knows who I am, and I know who he is. We don't know each other. But the YouTuber, uh, and I wouldn't call him a YouTuber. He's a filmmaker. He's a filmmaker. He makes films, right? They're good. He made a film about homelessness, and people commented on it, like, Oh, this isn't really homelessness. This is a sanitized view. Yeah, of course it's a sanitized view of homelessness. Look at this. Nobody wants to look at this. He makes a film for the rich people to watch so that they'll understand homelessness. He can't be honest. He's talking to rich people. They don't accept honesty. And by rich, I mean lower middle class. I mean, there is no rich people left in America. There's like 50 rich people and a bunch of poor people. <laughs> Uh, 
over medicating themselves to death, the poor people. And the rich people, uh, they love it because it's easy to control uh, people who are way, way over medicated. I think sometimes they will understand life better. Yeah. This is my life. Hey, it's nice, isn't it? Real comfy. What a lazy idiot I am. Have you ever had a romantic partner swear to you that they're going to have the cops take you away? Of course you have. Something many of you have. If you wouldn't be watching my channel if you have experienced something like that. Probably. And you know what? Like, you wouldn't watch 35 minutes of a man in a porta potty ranting about mental health. Somebody hadn't hurt you in some way. So I'm sure at one point or another, somebody has been like, I'm going to make sure the cops put you away for life. <laughs> you know, bullshit, some sort of nonsense about nothing. Like, because you did whatever, I'm going to make sure that the cops keep you away. Somebody's pulled that line on you. And it makes you paranoid. Well, it doesn't make you anything. You feel paranoid because you're not seeing clearly because you care about the person. So you allow that person's line to become real inside your head. And you react badly based on information you know is wrong. And that's what's going on. Every noise is a thing that's going to get me, right? Because I let uh, many people convince me that I'm going to get God. They're like, you're going to get God. Because of all the things you did and I didn't do anything. Is what they say. You know, abusers, bullies, I don't care what term you want to use. We are all the same person, remember? You allowed a thing to happen, they did a thing. Those people who did the things, they will tell you that, you know, they didn't do the things. Even right after they do the things, oh my God stupid piece of shit that was employing me uh, to death. Uh, he would say a thing and say the opposite thing and I'd be like, dude, you just said the opposite thing before and now you're saying something else. And he'd be like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Fucking piece of shit. Oh my God. Don't let anybody stand on you. And I, 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 I don't mean stand I mean, stand. Don't let anybody fan out on you like you're a celebrity. Don't. Because you guess what people do to celebrities? Kill them. Kill, kill, kill. Anybody, any, any hero. Kill, kill, kill. That's what they do. That's what people do. It's fucking weird and it's fucking horrible. But it just is what it is. I mean, listen to any song anywhere. Listen with fresh eyes after watching this video, okay? 
and you will know every song is about the artist saying, please stop killing me. Jesus, it's roomy in here. Oh man, I can stretch. I can actually stretch out and lay on my fucking back. That's so wonderful. I am indeed safe in this porta potty because squeaky bricks. <clears throat> because if a police officer, you know, if some gentleman or an officer approached this, they'd knock. They'd expect that I'm doing some sort of something or other. That's maybe bathroom, but, you know, like. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna just burst through, the, you know. They're not gonna pry the door open first step. They're gonna like try to say something. That's plenty of time for me to take. I have a very small joint. That's the only illegal thing I've got on me. So it's like even if they smell the pot, and they know that that's what I'm doing. I'd be real uh -huh, uh, Fuck you. You know. That's if. Those of you who are like all oh, super worried about marijuana, just roll a very small joint. Take that in public. Smoke in public. Uh, guess what? You can get away with it every fucking time. Even if the cop sees you smoke. Well, okay. If he sees you, then you're kind of fucked. <laughs> but if he smells it and you get rid of it by swallowing it without him seeing you swallow it, they technically can't do anything. Here's the rub. A cop can arrest you for anything they fucking make up. I grew up in Baltimore, and I know this to be true. So, you know, be careful. But, yeah, smoke weed anywhere you want. It's, mm. I'm sure you have some idea because I've tried to explain it. I'm going to work my midriff into looseness enough that oh, I can pee, which is probably the major issue right now. It's just that I need to evacuate fluids. I had like 17 refills at a coffee shop today. And then I connected with a girl and she became concerned. So my body tensed to the point I could, I, nothing is going to move ever again. You know, like it, that's what it feels like. It, like everything, every muscle in my body contracts and I can't. And like, you know, things stop moving in my intestines, my bladder uh, seals like uh, the tomb of Jesus. And three days later, I can resurrect the urine out of my fucking bladder. was a major part of gas. I mean, like, air inside my body, because I'm so dizzy. Uh, causes major issues. Not just because I'm so good, but because my body is so absolutely broken. Gas uh, is enough to cause such physical, like not mental, literal physical distress. 
because I have a lot of broken parts. They're mostly made of broken parts. So yeah, if there's air inside my body, it pushes on things that are broken and uh, can barely maintain. So I have to get Two days sleeping under a bridge in very chilly, yeah, chilly, in freezing temperatures. Uh, last night was not freezing. It was like 39. That's not bad. That is like very doable. 32, not so much. I, I, my alarm clock, uh, the joke I made was that my alarm clock was frostbite. And it's not a joke. It's just a fact that. Uh, not this morning, but yesterday morning, I woke up with frostbite, which is a serious thing. You, know, you need to take care of frostbite uh, or you lose digits, you know, phalanges and whatever they call toes. I think those are also phalanges. I don't know. Um, All right, stand by. Holy shit, my body hurts so fucking bad. It is not her fault. She didn't do anything wrong. She cared about me. That's a good thing. She's empathetic. That's a good thing. You shouldn't like blame her for the fact that, and I'm not blaming her. You also need to not blame her. She's, I don't know, you know, she's like a legit, you know, a legit, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the way to say it without, like, just see, see, this is what happens. I'm thinking about the fact that she could watch this. And then, oh no, she knows all this intimate shit about my life. And she may misconstrue it as I'm interested in her. I'm not, you know, like I'm not. At the same time, I need to survive. And so pair bonding is an imperative. And so if somebody cares about me and keeps boundaries, I'm like, oh my God, here's somebody that I might not, you know, might not lose. Sure. That's not true. You lose everybody in life, you always will.
Okay. Let's see. The pain issue I'm having, the main source of it, is that a distended bladder is going to press on a slip, some sort of, you know, disc issue in my back. And that disc issue is especially bad. Go see a chiropractor. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, you stupid piece of shit. Uh, I uh, was an athlete for a very long time. I had chiropractors as clients. And holy hell, they are bilking you out of money. I know their tricks because I work with them. I'm so cool. Muscle cars. I don't know why muscle cars freak me straight the fuck out, but they do. Because their engines are different from typical cars, I guess. I mean, there are a lot of things that trigger me that I like can't identify what the trauma was that makes me feel, you know, terrified that I hear them, see them, smell them, touch them, whatever. Okay. I think that in the time that we have talked here, I have kept things. I leave things a lot because it's hard to focus. Thanks for uh, whatever this was. Um, girl, whose name I will not learn. Uh. It's not your fault that I am this way, and you know that because you're not a stupid piece of shit like every other human being, although you are because we are all one. Um, not your fault, okay? I know. I, it sucks that connecting with you causes me so much pain that I have to hide in a porta potty for an hour before I go back in public, but hey, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, I'm Scary Jerry West, and I live life the wrong way. So welcome to me. My back it still hurts, but it hurts so much less because my internal working parts aren't pressing on them. Oh my god. Oh wow. That's some nice things. I'll have a backpack pressing on it on the disc between my spinal columns. My spinal, my vertebra. The, the, the stuff that keeps my spine from pushing on itself. Um, oh, oh, shit. So much pain. There's something down there. Oh, God. Oh, no. I have a touch screen, and that's an issue. Um, damn it. Yeah, no, I like things. You can't leave things. An HVAC or something came on near, and I was like, what is that? Oh, 
speed that's not very sweet. Woman gave it to me. What is this? Piece of chalk. The fuck? Oh no. I mean that. My backpack is not fully secure. That sucks. Stop it, Cortana. When I talk, my touch screen. Damn it. My touch screen activates when I talk. Because it's sensitive like me. The audacity of hope, am I right? Thanks, Obama. You know, you know whose fault this is? Obama. He did this. <clears throat> Good popular opinion. Well, Tommy. Why? Okay, why is chalk falling out of our backpack? Shit, you fucking shit. Yeah, because my back is Jesus Christ. They picked up my backpack and it's not fixed. That's why. Yeah, I thought that that was probably going to be a problem that I didn't put it. Alright, okay. Okay, Chris, I opened the backpack to get the laptop out. Stupid motherfucker. Now it's going to walk out of this stupid party body with an open backpack. Dump all my shit on the ground. Holy fucking fuck. <clears throat> All right. So, what have we established here today? When Joel connects with a human being, Joel's body tenses to a clinically challenging degree. When uh, Joel's body tenses. Joel is in so much pain. Oh, by the way, I'm... Joel is one of the names of used, okay? I was born Joel Elliott Tucker. I uh, changed it to Buford Pickle Feather for like two years just because. Then I changed it to Jet Black. Yeah. Uh, then I changed it to Jerry Sisler. Activate the damn touch screen again. Then I changed it to oh man, Jerry Wills. Then I changed it to to this somebody else changed it to Jerry Webb. Now multiple sermons. Why would that be about me? It's not about me. Uh, then I changed it to then no again somebody else changed it to scary Jerry Webb. To make fun of me. Captain, Connors, Sir, got your game. Well, we've I've talked about it before. Nobody listens. Doesn't matter. After Scary Jerry West, I went back to being Joel Elliot Tucker. Then I changed it to Joel Elliot. Now I'm changing it back to Scary Jerry West. The only person in my life that's like important enough to me uh, is a woman I barely know. You know what she calls me? Scary. Affectionately, she calls me that. She's like the 57th Jessica I've known in life, and she's she's a decent woman. And so she's the only one in my life that calls me by the name I prefer, which is scary. <laughs> Many levels, that's true. Like, it's scary that she does that because, you know, she cares about me. And if she cares about me, well, then that's a problem. As I have explained, I can't believe you have listened to me talk for an hour. In a porta potty, in Huntsbury, 
Pencil Rocket Town. Pennsylvania and Huntsville, very similar. By the way, South Central Pennsylvania and Huntsville. Oh my god. So similar. Uh, oh, Buzz? Interesting. Ooh, four of us? Ooh. Ooh, who's in town? Ooh. Alright, so, like, yeah, my back is still in excruciating pain. <coughs> but it's the excruciating pain I'm used to. This porta potty is on an angle, which is making it really difficult to look around. Okay. It's okay. Uh, right. Thanks. This was fun. We had fun today. You know, we know that Joel, uh, Jerry, uh, Buford, uh, Scary, is living life the wrong way. Yeah. Because I'm sure you've heard from everybody you've ever spoken to that there's a right way and a wrong way to live life. Because, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Well.